What a breath of fresh air. Finally, we have a professional athlete who understands he's a professional athlete. He's not a political activist. He is not a deacon at Woke United Methodist. Patrick Mahomes has a firm understanding that his job, his only job, is to be the franchise quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, while at the same time being the face of the NFL. I hope the NBA is taking notes. I hope the next face of the NBA is studying Patrick Mahomes. Do not emulate LeBron James. If you are looking for the quickest way to tank ratings and ruin the public perception of your league, copy LeBron James. If you are looking to promote your league to the widest audience possible, I suggest that you model your career after Patrick Mahomes. This dude, This dude might be the most likable professional athlete right now in America. And it's amazing when you think about it because his family has a tendency to be... You know, typically, I prefer not to go after or involve families of public figures. In my opinion, family should always be off limits. But it's different here with the family of Patrick Mahomes because... They have chosen to insert themselves into the spotlight. They are milking the family cash cow until there is no milk left in the bosom. I mean this in the most respectful way possible. Patrick Mahomes' family is absolutely insufferable. His wife, Brittany Mahomes, her behavior is painful. One thing about Britt Mahomes, you can't accuse her of being a gold digger. She has been with Patrick Mahomes, I believe, since they were in high school. She might not be after his money, but she is damn sure after his fame. Brittany Mahomes wants to be a star. Every week during football season, she is on social media begging for attention, begging to be noticed. Then you have the lesser known Pat Mahomes, the father. The good thing about Papa Mahomes, he's not necessarily looking to be in the spotlight. The bad thing about the Mahomes family patriarch, the only time he seems to be in the spotlight is when cops are shining their flashlights through his car looking for contraband before they take his drunk ass back to his secondary residence, jail. I have seen career criminals with a shorter rap sheet than Papa Mahomes. When talking about the embarrassment of the Mahomes family, I would be remiss if I failed to mention the brother who often behaves like a sister. He is the lead dancer at Club Shay Shay, where he attempts to hypnotize male patrons with his mango-like dance moves. He is the creator of the Foo Foo Dance, the dancing queen himself, Jackie Mahomes. Dancing queen, young and sweet, my name is Jackie. Dancing queen, embarrassing my family. Oh yeah, you can dance, you can jive, play the butt bongo all night. If you're a member of Club Shay Shay, you are probably accustomed to the Jackie Mahomes experience. I can promise you one thing. If you become a member of Behind the Line, I guarantee you, you will never see a performance from Jackie Mahomes. You might get my bad singing, but you will not get the bad dancing of the Dancing Queen. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, be sure to hit the join button and become a member. I'm launching a Discord server exclusively for channel members. You'll receive 10% off all merchandise, which should be launching here in the next couple of weeks. I'm waiting on my samples to arrive right now. So if you want to support the channel, sign up to become a channel member today. Anyway, the point is, The family of Patrick Mahomes makes it incredibly difficult to like him. You throw in Taylor Swiffer and the constant promotion of Swiffer mops during broadcast of the Kansas City Chiefs, along with the incessant promotion of her relationship with Travis Swiffer, you have a recipe for a public relations disaster. You have a recipe for turning Patrick Mahomes into one of the most hated players in the NFL. And for large parts of last season... That is exactly what was happening. But for some reason, Patrick Mahomes always manages to recapture his popularity. He always manages to get people to look past all the bullshit and actually like him. His interview that was released earlier this afternoon with Time Magazine, 
It is a primary example of why Patrick Mahomes is so liked and so well respected. Every year, Time Magazine, they put together a list of the 100 most influential people in America, or maybe it's the 100 most influential people in the world. Hell, I don't know. Every year when I see this list, I'm always confused. Because none of the people on the list have any influence over me or anyone I know. Last year, Bob Griner made the time 100. What did Bob Griner do that was so influential? She played a game of Where's Waldo with security at a Russian airport. Unfortunately for Bobby G, Russian security, they managed to find Waldo in her luggage. Now, of course, they didn't call it Waldo. They didn't want to be accused of dead naming, so they referred to it by the preferred title of Mary Jane. Bob Griner was trying to sneak her friend Mary into Russia for a vacation with Vlad Puder. Bob gets caught, spends 10 months in a Russian prison. For some strange reason, Time Magazine thought that made Bob Griner influential. Three years ago, Time claimed that Stacey Abrams was influential. Well, Casey, who in the hell is Stacey Abrams? <laughs> She's that lady that was running around the country pretending to be the governor of Georgia. Anytime someone referred to her as Stacy, she replied back saying, Address me properly, peasant. I am choosing to identify as the governor of Georgia. Since we are living in the age of the identifier, some people actually believe that Stacey Abrams was the governor of Georgia. The other 90, maybe 95% of the population believe that she was out of her mind. Now, to be fair, there are some people that make the Time 100 that are actually qualified. They have actually accomplished something. Patrick Mahomes is a prime example. During the interview, they focused on his NFL career. They highlighted the fact that at 28 years old with three Super Bowl wins, Patrick Mahomes is on pace to match Tom Brady. If he matches or exceeds Tom Brady... 10, 15 years from now, we could be having a very different conversation as to who is the greatest quarterback of all time in the NFL. But towards the middle of the discussion, time, they brought up the tragic shooting during the Chiefs Super Bowl parade a couple of months ago. In response to the shooting, Patrick Mahomes tweeted that he was praying for the city of Kansas City. He and his wife, they also visited a pair of sisters who were victims of the shooting, and they donated $50,000 to aid all victims who were impacted. What Patrick Mahomes did not do, although he was heavily heavily pressured to do so. What Patrick Mahomes didn't do was advocate for gun control. During the interview, Time Magazine, they asked him why he refused to advocate for gun control. Patrick Mahomes said, I don't want to make a quick response to something that takes a lot of education to really learn and make a swaying comment based off of that. I mean, isn't that refreshing? What Patrick Mahomes is basically saying is, I don't know enough about this issue. I am not going to use my platform to speak an uneducated viewpoint just to sway people in a certain direction. There's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with admitting that you don't know about something. It sure beats the hell out of how LeBron James responded during the summer of 2020. It beats the hell out of how Major League Baseball responded to mythical racism in Georgia. They moved the All-Star game out of Atlanta, claiming they're doing so, fighting for the rights of black people. Rob Manfred moves the All-Star game out of Atlanta, a primarily black city, to Denver, a primarily white city. All in the name of combating mythical racism. Here in a few months, we are going to have another election. Like all presidential elections, this one will be emotionally charged. It will be portrayed by the mainstream media as the most important election of our lifetime. Democracy is at stake, damn it! You must use your platforms to influence the plebes. You must use your platform to tell people how to vote. Over the next few months, we are going to see dozens of public figures using their platform to sway the vote. The vast majority of them are going to use their platform in an attempt to convince you to vote for John Biden. Now, at this point, I cannot 
fathom how anyone could be convinced to vote for John Biden. There are wars all over the world. Gas is creeping up again. Soon, a pint of Jim Beam will be cheaper than a gallon of gas. Earlier today, I went to the grocery store. I got some treats for my two Yorkies, some Benadryl, canola oil, crescent rolls, and a case of water. It was $80. Me personally, I don't eat fast food, but my teenager does. When I was her age, fast food places used to have a dollar menu. If we continue under the leadership of John Biden, it won't be long until McDonald's has a $100 menu. Four years ago, Patrick Mahomes joined LeBron James in the More Than a Vote campaign. Now, the campaign... It is designed to increase African-American turnout at the polls. Mahomes, he plans to do the same thing again this year, which is great. That's great because most of the black people I speak to, they're tired of John Biden too. But even though he participated in this campaign, Patrick Mahomes, he did not endorse a candidate four years ago. Time Magazine asked if he would publicly endorse a candidate this year. Patrick Mahomes said, I don't want to pressure anyone to vote for a certain president. I want people to use their voice and vote for whoever they believe in. I want people to do their own research. Let me translate that for you again. Let me tell you what I heard Patrick Mahomes say. Vote your conscience. Don't look to me to influence your decision. Roger Goodell has got to be thrilled with this response from Patrick Mahomes. This is why he is the family cash cow. This is why he is the face of the NFL. Patrick Mahomes is a smart businessman. He may be a supporter of John Biden. He might think Cam Harris is the best pretend vice president America's ever had. But you know what he's not going to do? He's not going to tell you about it. Want to know why? Because Patrick Mahomes doesn't want to alienate half of his fan base. Sports and politics do not mix. The past four years, we have seen countless athletes express their political views. Hell, ESPN, they turned themselves into the worldwide leader in woke. For years, normal people have been rejecting it. Normal people have said, we don't want to hear your political opinions. We're not watching you on Sunday afternoons to see which candidate you're endorsing. People watch sports to get away from politics. People watch sports to get away from reality. And good for Patrick Mahomes for realizing it. But give me your thoughts. Patrick Mahomes' name to the time 100. He refuses to use the interview to promote politics. He refuses to use his platform to promote gun control or advocate for it. Am I the only one who finds this refreshing? I was critical of Patrick Mahomes throughout last season. Mainly, I was critical of the Chiefs because I felt like they had become a spectacle. But this interview, it gave me a new appreciation for Patrick Mahomes. What about you? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.